Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, as uh, Labour prepare to publish their comprehensive proposals for dealing with the latest Tory economic mess, I noticed that Rishi Sunak, who's basically now the uh, look at what you could have won leadership candidate, has published his own 10 point plan. Well, he calls it a plan. On close inspection, it's actually just 10 aims with some policy proposals within them that don't seem to uh, prove how they're going to address any problem. But why is he publishing a list of proposals that he refused to back as Chancellor? And would they even solve the crisis? But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So you may ask, why am I even bothering to go over any of Rishi Sunak's plans when he seems completely out of the competition now and stealing himself for a three week ass kicking? Well, there are a couple of reasons, really. The first is that I said at the start of this final stage of the contest, if Rishi Sunak feels that he's losing badly, and I think that is the case, he will become increasingly ridiculous in his campaign promises. Because when you're not in a position where you'll have to follow through on them, you can promise the earth. But trust cannot take anything for granted. So her policy promises can be influenced by Sunak's in order to maintain her lead. The second reason is that it's actually a good opportunity for critically evaluating campaign promises in general. You know, I used to do a weekly look at how the Brexit media were presenting various Brexit related stories with a mind to looking at critical thinking when reading reports. Same principles can apply here. So I often try to explain to people who wonder, for example, a little of a uh, tangent here, why unelected lords have often over the last few years seemed to be the only politicians willing to tell the unvarnished truth about our national predicaments. You know, and that it's because they no longer need to care much about what other people think. I have a great deal of sympathy with MPs up to a point. People bemoan the fact that MPs are evasive or even misleading about certain facts, but it's because the full unvarnished truth is voter repellent. People say they want honest politicians but they don't seem to like it when one actually speaks the truth. What people really want is to be told that there are easy answers to problems that they face. That's it. That's why you get so many charlatans in politics, because they're quite happy to promise the easy answers. Doesn't actually solve anything, but they'll keep on promising them anyway. That's how you get the vote. And I sort of see Rishi Sunak as being close to this position now. His chances of winning the leadership contest are all but dead and buried, barring something on a level with a divine intervention, yet we're not even halfway through this final interminable stage of the contest. There's weeks still to go. And Sunak agreed not to back out of the contest, so he has to keep plodding along and putting up a fight. He's now got what he calls a 10-point plan. Now, I first saw this in a tweet. I obviously don't expect a tweet to contain any details, but there was a link to the website. I thought, great, that's where the detail will be. No, sadly, there were no details there either, except for the final point where there were details, but they only apply to proposals for Conservative Party members, so useless to the rest of us. So what was in this 10 point plan? Well, the first is to drop the basic rate of income tax from 20%, which is where it has now, to 16%. Now, he'd mentioned this one before, but he's only going to do it once inflation is under control, he says. Now, given that this is not forecast to be the case before the next general election. This isn't even a firm policy promise. It's not just that he's not going to do it straight away. He's not even going to do it before the next general election. Classic case of a political promise that is conditional upon certain factors being in play. In this case, inflation back down to below 2%. As the economic conditions are not likely to occur, this is less of a promise. It's more like, you know, when you see uh, advertisements for sales jobs and it talks about the potential earn on target earnings, you know, the potential bonuses you can earn, which is basically impossible to achieve. Second point, temporarily scrapping VAT on energy bills for this winter. Nothing on what he does to help people who will still be facing the in excess of 200% higher bills after this point. Also, VAT on energy bills is 5%. Don't get me wrong, by all means, scrap it. Sure, why not? But look at this. This shows just where the UK stands when compared to our neighbours. And actually, I think since this was prepared, the situation is looking even worse for the UK. I mean, France famously has just put a lid on energy price rises. Theirs has gone up by 4%. Other EU countries have much more serious price increases. 
but but the UK we're projected at the well when this was compiled last week we were projected for a two hundred fifteen percent increase in coming. I think it's now gone up more. I think it's now near a two hundred fifty percent likely. So this winter energy bills will have gone up by at least two hundred fifteen percent, and Sunex plan to help people is to reduce their bills by 5%. That is even more pathetic than Liz Truss's plan. Third, he says he's gonna fine people for missing NHS appointments. Again, he's talked about this one before. Now, people will have different views on the rights and wrongs of this one, but one thing is certain, it doesn't clear the backlog that the Tories have built up in their time in power, because at the end of the day, that backlog has not been created by the odd person missing an appointment. It's one of those policy proposals where they identify a problem and then present a policy without any evidence that there's a link between them, that the proposal would have any impact on the problem at all. It's just one of those things that's designed to appeal to people. So you, what you're trying to do is to say to people, the reason why, there's all, why you can't get an appointment with your GP, it's because of people who make an appointment and don't turn up to it. You know, they do this more commonly with laws actually. You know, the Conservatives in particular, but I mean, any politicians can in power. You know, they'll often legislate against something that's already illegal. You know, something will emerge in the news. Oh, this scourge, oh, the government should do something about it. So the government say, well, we'll make a law to criminalise it. And then you get actual barristers, criminal barristers, taking to social media to say, it's already illegal. There are already laws against this. So the government make their own special law against it to, to, to make out that they're doing something. You know, and it works because people don't know the law. So they think the Tories are legislating against this behaviour that they read about in the press. You know, and, and it's a classic case of we have to do something about this thing. The public are head up about it. Doesn't matter if there's something we do helps as long as it looks like we're doing something. The fourth one doesn't actually have a policy proposal at all, but it's one of those that looks like it does. You know, he promises to scrap all EU laws. Well, the thing about EU laws is that only the EU Parliament can change them. It's not hard, really. The EU decides EU law, France decides French law, Australia decides Australian law, the UK decides UK law, and so on. That's how it works. So what he actually means is he wants to scrap all UK laws that were formed in conjunction with the EU when we were members, the vast majority of which were formulated and promoted by the UK governments of the time. Now, this is not going to occur and he knows it. Liz Truss's allies are claiming that, that Sunak actually blocked a load of the removal of EU legacy regulations. And this isn't just them carping. You know, I've been reading reports of this for quite a while, long before the leadership contest. Sunak understands the damage it will do to the economy. So this non-proposal is the clearest evidence for me that he knows he's not winning this contest and he's just trying to cause trouble for Liz Truss because that's what he's doing. You know, he's, he's trashing of trust and presenting fantasy policies to try and outscore her are only going to damage the party's chance in the next election because it's just going to make Liz Truss look like more of a failure. So the conclusion is he doesn't care about the party winning any more than either Johnson or when it comes to it, Truss do. You know, I can, unless they're in charge. I can only think that he is either using these last weeks to weaken Truss's position maybe as an act of revenge, or to paint a picture of what could have been achieved if he'd won, maybe for a future challenge. He can then wait for Trust to mess up, point out that he tried to warn them that she was basically incompetent and had no idea what her policies would involve in practice, and that's why she couldn't go through with them. But he knew what to do, he'd thought about it, and although his policy proposals may not have looked as sexy, they were at least realistic. That's what he can claim. For example, when Trust doesn't scrap the EU regulations that she's promising to, Sunak can say that she was lying, but that he meant it. Then there's a series of vague proposals for immigration, policing and education, which again, don't include any clear policy that you could get a civil servant to draft into a white paper. So you can't really call them policy proposals. Again, just aims. He reckons he's going to strengthen the union, as in the UK, by treating the First Minister of Scotland as an enemy and by crushing Northern Ireland's economy and tenuous political balance. Nice one. I mean, when it comes to the Nicola Sturgeon remarks from both Sunak and Truss, uh, of course we understand that different political parties are opponents. Yes, the Tories will attack the leadership of the SNP, just like the SNP attack the leaderships of political parties ranged against them. But you don't make it part of your policy proposals as head of government to attack political leaders in your own country. 
it's beyond childish. There should be a distinction between party political business, which includes that argy-bargy, and government business, which does not. He also talks about building houses on brownfield sites faster. I mean, it couldn't very well be any slower, but again, he doesn't really say how he'll do it. I noted that he did say he would block inappropriate development on our green belt. Rough translation, he would block house building in areas where Tory homeowners live. Not really a difficult promise to keep, because the Tories record on new house building, or even freeing up existing buildings to use as homes, is pretty woeful. It's not in their interest to have enough homes for people, because their voters tend to be homeowners who don't want new builds for others. Finally, he talks of winning the next general election by better funding for campaign managers, fine, fair enough, and giving party members more say. Excuse me? <laughs> there is actually some detail here. When you, when you go onto the website with the no detail for everything else, you click on a link for this. Oh, there's some detail here. It's the only part of his plan with some solid plan in actual fact. He promises to poll party members and put their top three issues to cabinet on a monthly basis. I cannot imagine doing anything more stupid. Party members are just as ignorant as the general population. Yes, some party members, just like some members of the general population, are very tuned into political issues of various kinds, but by and large, we don't really know a great deal about them. But party members do not represent crucial votes for an election. If they are party members, it's sort of understood they're going to vote for the party regardless. You have to wonder what they're doing in the party if that's not the case. So Sunak's plan is to make Cabinet be derailed once a month by talking about three policies that matter to a fringe group of voters who votes can absolutely be taken for granted and that are likely to be the very policies almost designed to piss off the genuinely important voters. This is what you would do if you want to keep your party in opposition. Ask for policy proposals from a narrow section of your voter base, from the ill-informed and out of kilter with the general public. I mean, there are good reasons for asking the views of people who have one of those drawbacks, but not both. So again, I would just read this as a way of making Liz Truss look like she doesn't actually care what the members think. Like Sunak saying, oh, I want to involve the party members, you know, very much so. Right at the heart of cabinet, you know, and government itself, government decisions. I want to involve the parliament, the uh, wider party membership. So, in, in, but Truss just wants them to vote for her and then bugger off back to sleep is what he's basically saying. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.